Welcome. Our topic for today is the neuron. This is the outline of our lecture. Definition, functions of the neurons, the structure of the neurons, what they look like, the synapses, types of neurons, and the neuroglia. The neuron basically is the microscopic unit of the nervous system. This means that it is the smallest unit that cannot be seen with the naked eye, except with the use of a microscope. It is the basic structural and functional unit of the nervous system, which includes the brain, the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system. The functions of the neurons. Basically, the neurons are involved in the reception of neural information from the external or internal environment as the case may be. Reception of neural information from the target organ, and it takes the information to the brain for analysis. When they get to the brain and the spinal cord, neurons are also embedded within it that are responsible for the integration and analysis of this message that is received. Also, after the interpretation, the generated impulses are also taken by neurons to the target organ. So what they do basically is to receive neural impulses, to integrate or analyze it, and also to conduct the response back to the target organ. The unique characteristics of neuron basically include the fact that they are specialized cell type, and this means that they are specifically designed for the kind of function that they present, which include reception, analysis, and also conduction of the interpreted message. So they are specially designed to suit the function that they present. They are also excitable, which means that they can respond to any form of stimulus that they receive. They are conductible, which means that they allow the transmission of signal the structure of neuron. It is noted that neurons generally may differ slightly in shape or in size, but their basic structure still remains the same. So talking about the morphology of the neurons, we like to divide their region into three compartments. And this includes the cell body, the axon, and also the dendrites we would be taking this one after the other to describe what they actually look like. The cell body basically is also known as the soma. It looks more like the configuration of a cell, which is enclosed by a plasma membrane. Within it, you have a centrally placed nucleus. Also within its cytoplasm, you have cell organelles that perform physically metabolic activities that allows the survival of the cell. And this includes the mitochondria, which is responsible for energy production. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum for lipid synthesis, and also the rough endoplasmic reticulum for protein synthesis. Basically, these cell organelles are embedded within the cytoplasm of the soma or the cell body of the neuron. And this is where the metabolic activity of the cell is controlled. So the second region is the axon. The axon is an elongated structure that extends from the soma or the cell body. And this is where the transmission of neural impulses is allowed. The first region I would like to talk about is the axon ELOC. This is like the initial segment of the axon. And this is where all the impulses generated through the dendrites are summed up and also energy is generated for them to be propagated down the axon. Also more on the axon, there is a kind of specialized design that is seen along the axon that enhance the fast movement of impulses along it. And this is the formation of the node of Ranvi. The node of Ranvi is formed by one of the neural supporting cells, which is called the Swan cell. So what happens is that the Swan cell moves around the entire circumference of the axon, but it does not have the grace to run along the circumference of the axon at a stretch. So what happens is that they run a specific distance and they take a rest 
they start again, they take a rest. And this now creates a form of intercepts within the myelin sheets. And this is how the neural impulses are able to jump from one node of Ranville to the other. This tends to speed up the rate at which the neural impulses moves along the axon. If we compare an unmyelinated axon with a myelinated axon, we see that the rate of movement in the myelinated axon will be faster than the unmyelinated axon because of the creation of the node of Ranvi. We also have the dendrites. The dendrites are short unmyelinated branched network. What they do basically is to conduct neural impulses from one cell through down to the neighboring cell. And they are basically of two types. We have the somatic dendrites from the name soma, which means cell body. And these are basically dendrites that are located around the cell body of the neuron. And we also have the terminal dendrites, which are located at the terminal portion of the axon. Synapses. So the point at which they form contact with each other is called the synapse. The synapse basically are intercellular joints where impulses are transmitted. For a synapse to occur, there must be basically two types of neurons. We must have a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron. The presynaptic neuron is the neuron that is bringing the impulse to the point of synapse. So it is like the giver of the neural impulse. While the neighboring neuron, which is termed the postsynaptic neuron, is the neuron that receives impulse from the presynaptic neuron. So the presynaptic neuron give neural impulse to the postsynaptic. The point at which they form contact with each other through which these impulses are transmitted is called the point of synapse. There are also two fundamental types. We could have a chemical synapse and we could have an electrical synapse. A chemical synapse occurs when information are transmitted by chemical secretion, which are basically neurotransmitter. But when neurotransmitter are not involved, but electrical impulse generation is involved, then it is termed an electrical synapse. The point of synapse between one neuron or the other can occur at different regions. We could have axodendritic synapse, we could have axosomatic synapse, we could also have axoaxomic synapse. So the presentation of axodendritic synapse basically occur when the axon of one neuron synapse to the dendrite of a neighboring neuron. What we need to do in this regard basically is to break down the name and see what region of a particular neuron connects with the other neuron. So the axon of one neuron forms a synaptic point with the dendrite of another neuron. It is through this point that the transmission occurs. Or we could have axosomatic synapse, which basically is the axon of one neuron connecting with the cell body of the neighboring neuron. And this is also the point through which synapse occur and transmission of impulses does occur. But we could have axoaxomic. This means that the axon of one neuron forms a synapse with the axon of another neuron. And of course, the transmission of impulse will occur at this point of synapse. So it actually depends on the region or the area of the neuron where these contacts are formed. And this could occur in a variety of uh, the regions in the neuron. Classification of neurons. We can classify neurons basically on what they look like. That is in terms of their morphology or in terms of what they do, that is their function. So classification based on what they look like. This is based on the number of processes that extend from the cell body. Remember when we talked about the cell body or the soma, which is like a cellular configuration where we have 
different cell organelles that carry out metabolic activity for the neurons. So the number of extension that we see around the cell body determines the structural classification of neuron. This is the cell body. If you look at this, this is a multipolar neuron. It is a multipolar neuron because it has numerous extension from the cell body. You can see the dendrites, the somatic dendrites, and you can see a bigger extension, which is the axon. And this configuration is what we see in like 99% of neuron. So this is the most common type of presentation. The second type is the bipolar neuron. Bi means two. That means from the cell body, you have two extension. This is one extension, and this is another extension. The unipolar neuron basically means it has one extension, just a single extension from the cell body, which further divides into two to form the dendrite and the axon. The functional classification is based on what they do. Remember, we described the central nervous system, that's the brain and the spinal cord, as a region where integration of neural impulses is carried out. But for it to be integrated or analyzed, something must be bringing neural information to it for it to analyze. So neurons that bring sensory information from the target organ down to the central nervous system are called the sensory neuron. You can also call them the afferent neuron because what they do, this is the external environment or the muscle. Let's say there's a strike or a slap or an injury on this muscle. Information are quickly taken up through the afferent neurons or the sensory neuron to the brain where it will be interpreted. After the interpretation or the analysis of the neural impulses, the resultant response is taken back to the target organ. And this is done by the motor neuron. May either be for the target organ to contract, to relax, or depending on the kind of resultant response that they give. Also within the central nervous system, we also have neurons that are embedded within it. And these are the neurons that are responsible for analysis. And these are called interneurons. So this interneuron basically forms an intermediate between the sensory neuron that bring information and also the motor neuron that takes the resultant response to the target organ. So within them, we have the interneuron. The neuroglia are basically a neural supporting cell. The neurons alone cannot take up its tax. It needs the support of other cells for it to be able to maintain itself and also enhance the function that they exhibit. The first one we would like to highlight is the swan cell. We've talked about the swan cell during the course of this lecture, and these are responsible for the formation of myelin sheets, which tends to create the node of Ranvi that allows the facilitation or enhance the movement of the generated impulses along the axon. We could also have the microglia. They are basically presented with immune defense. We also have astrocytes. Astrocytes basically they control uh, blood movement and also enhance structural support at the synaptic point and also the control of blood brain barrier. Then oligodendrocytes also are responsible for the formation of myelin sheet. But this is seen in neurons that are embedded in the central nervous system. Thank you for watching. Let's continue to upgrade our knowledge in anatomy through this channel.